What's going down, everybody? It's your boy, Martin Moreno, a.k.a. The Boxing Purist. Welcome, once again, to the Truth in Absolute channel, where we speak the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me, good God almighty. Okay, y'all, mark your calendars, stamp the date, get the day off from work, do whatever you got to do, okay? Because we got a fight on our hands. I saw that Oscar and Ryan posted it's a go for April 15th. They were holding the contract. It is a go, ladies and gentlemen. Now, now we see why Oscar put that deadline for Monday. It's a day after, but guess what? I, I had a feeling. You see, we point too many fingers, but the thing is, is I don't believe there's a squeaky queen, uh, clean boxing promoter, okay? I don't, none of them are straight arrows, right? However, when Oscar put that out, I knew what he was doing is putting pressure on Tank's team so that they wouldn't prolong it, so that they wouldn't stretch it out. Tank's team, you guys, I'm not talking about Tank. It's This is such a sensitive topic, yo. Oh, my gosh. I've made plenty of videos of, um, talking about many fights, uh, talking about fighters, you know, what I like and don't like about them. But damn, yo, the backlash that I've caught from making a comment, it wasn't even hate, yo about Tank is crazy. I'm talking about what? We're two weeks after the fight, a week or two weeks after, I, I'm lost, yo. You know what I'm saying? The Garcia-Tank fight, and I'm still catching it. I am still catching heat. It's all good, though. I like talking boxing. Even though out of 100, only three of them talk boxing. The rest of them... <laughs> anyway, man, let's get on with this, yo. So it's... it's mark your calendar. Just do all that. Let's talk about this fight now, Okay. This is going to be an exciting fight. I don't see this fight going 12 rounds either way. Okay, either Garcia is stopping Tank or Tank is stopping Garcia. It's a really good fight, yo, because I want to say they both equally want this fight. But let's be real, y'all. Let's be real. We can make excuses. We could say it appears that Ryan has been the hotter one to get this fight over Tank. Not to say Tank doesn't want it. I'm just saying he hasn't been as vocal. He hasn't been as loud about wanting this, this fight. But I guess we never really hear Tank, right, say anything. Maybe that's his character. Maybe that's part of his promotional team's business, whatever. So I was looking into this fight, yo, and it's going to be a great fight. You know, we got Ryan saying that he's going to stop Tank in two rounds, which I don't think he's going to stop Tank in two rounds. First of all, I don't think he's going to go in there swinging crazy trying to get Tank out in two rounds. I think he's referring to Tank, you know, gets hit more than he should. But Ryan gets hit more than he should, too. So that's what makes it even more interesting. I don't see Ryan jumping on him early. And I don't see Tank jumping on Ryan at all. You know, it wouldn't be a smart move. So... I was looking into it, yo. Tank is five, five listed as five feet five inches tall. Ryan is five feet eleven inches. Tank has a sixty-seven and a half inch for his reach. Ryan is at about seventy and a half, so Ryan has a three-inch advantage there. This is an interesting fight. It's an interesting fight because y'all may say whatever you want, but their careers have been very similar. Like they have not necessarily fought another elite fighter. I mean, Ryan did fight a Luke Campbell, and a lot of people sleep on Luke Campbell because they didn't hear about him until later, right? People forget that Luke Campbell fought Vasily Lomachenko and gave him a decent fight, okay? People forget about that. Tank Davis, on the other hand, he... I like to speak the truth, you guys, okay? One thing about my channel is... You're not going to get biased opinions. When it comes to boxing, I, I like picking winners. I don't necessarily root for a fighter. I like being right on the fighters that I pick, but I don't necessarily root for a fighter. My favorite fighter of all time is retired in SOG, Andre Ward, okay? And even then, I wasn't biased with it. So how I see this fight playing now, I see it starting off semi-slow, Okay, I think both fighters are going to be feeling each other out because it's it's a it's a clash. You know, sometimes Tank comes forward. Sometimes he's on his back foot. Ryan, for the most part, he comes forward. There hasn't been a really guy that presses Ryan. Right. We don't see guys normally press Ryan. So that's going to be an interesting uh, thing to start the fight with. I think Tank is the better boxer. And I've said it in videos in the past. I think he's the better boxer when it comes to being in that ring. Which I don't understand, a lot of you guys don't get, is how natural advantages help in boxing. The stuff you can't teach, the height, the length, those things you can't teach, you know what I'm saying? But they hold an advantage in boxing, 
okay? Jumping off subject for a little bit, off topic, let's it's Usyk Fury. We could say that boxing, they're fairly equal. They're both great boxers. They both know what to do inside that ring. They both got a lot of movement. They know what to do. They could get out of the way um, of punches and whatnot. But you got to remember that Fury holds like a seven, eight inch height advantage, I believe, over Usyk and a reach advantage. You know how much harder that makes it on a fighter like Usyk when it comes to just boxing straight up and down? So in this fight, that is what I'm looking at. That is what I'm looking at when it comes to Tank versus Ryan. So again, I give Tank the boxing IQ. He's the better boxer. Ryan, I would say he has the natural advantages. And when it comes to speed, I'd have to say that Ryan is the, the faster fighter. Doesn't always know how to use his speed to his advantage against a fighter. No, but nonetheless, he has it. I think they could both bang, right? They could both end the not, um, the fight with one punch. One thing, though, is that Ryan has been dropped, okay? Now, a lot of people might knock him for that, but let's not forget he got dropped, got back up, and dropped the other guy. That takes a lot in boxing. Also, he knows what it's like to get dropped. You know what I'm saying? So that really helps you inside of the ring. Like I said in the beginning, I don't see it going the distance either way. I see if I if Tank stops Ryan, I don't know why. I, I think it'll be with a body shot. I think it will be with a body shot. I think it'll be smart for Tank to try to get in on Ryan and hit him to the body. It's going to be real hard for Tank to pop shot Ryan with him on the back foot. I don't think he presses Ryan because... But at the same time, Ryan has a bad habit of dropping his hands when he's backing up. He'll move straight back and he'll drop his hands straight down low. I've seen videos where they work and work and work with him on it. And it's, it's just one of the bad habits that Ryan has. I think that's why he had it that, you know, step back laugh hook that he caught Fortuna with that is just quick as lightning. Right. You guys saw it. I saw it. We all saw it. Um, I think it's going to be a real treat, yo. I think this fight is going to open up the 135 division. I think these guys are going to be hammering at each other. Um, I want to give my final prediction on this fight. I'm not a betting man, but if I was looking from the outside in, taking emotions out of it, no favorite fighters, I'm going to predict that Ryan gets the knockout between the sixth and the eighth round. That's just my prediction, y'all. It's not a favorite thing. Y'all can say whatever you want. This is just my prediction. I personally think Ryan gets him out of there between six and eight rounds. Those advantages are heavy, heavy. You know, Tank knows he has not been in there with a guy at the level of Ryan. And Ryan as well knows he hasn't been in there with a guy with the level of Tank. But Ryan being the underdog, there's something about the underdog that, in my opinion, always gives them an advantage. You see, a lot of people are not giving Ryan a chance in this fight. So it's a it's a win win. You know what I'm saying? Tank, however, the pressure is on him because one thing about Floyd Heyman and all those guys, they did a great job building the tank brand. Like Tim Bradley said, they did a great job. That's why when I speak to a lot of you guys and you guys are saying that tank is the goat, the next Floyd, I don't see it because he hasn't been in there with someone that you could be like, OK, he has it. He's going to do it. Don't get me wrong. The guy's an animal. He could bang. He could do all that. The guys that he's fought, he has put away, but he has not been in there with another elite fighter. It's, it's just the truth. Nor has Ryan. Luke Campbell is almost there, but he's not an elite fighter. He's not another top gunner in that division. So my prediction, Ryan gets him out of there between six and eight rounds. Let's talk boxing, y'all. Comment down below. I love engaging with you guys. If you guys are just going to hit me with a bunch of emojis, I'll like your comment because you stopped by, but I won't engage because I don't get nowhere with you guys. It's just the truth. I'm sorry. Take it how you want. Like this video, share it, do what you got to do, subscribe if you're not already, yo, okay? Tell me what you guys think, give me your guys' prediction, let's talk boxing, but as far as what I said, I mean what I said. Y'all have a great night, I'm excited for this fight, it'll be here before you know it. God bless, y'all be safe, peace.